What is going on guys, Noah Burr here, back again with another banger of a video. And today we're gonna to be talking about how you can scale your Shopify store if you're on a tight budget. This video is also gonna be great if you're new to scaling and you want help managing the cash flow, payment processors, fulfilling orders. We're gonna be covering a lot of different things in this video that are super relevant, especially for beginners that are starting to find winning products and starting to scale. So not only will this video be about how to scale on a budget, but it will also be about how to scale in the most efficient way and kind of run into the least amount of issues while you're scaling. So I want to cover why I'm making this video real quick. Number one, TikTok ads have been bringing me a lot of people to my DMs that are finding new winning products just out of the blue, you know, beginners, people that are experienced, whatever. And I really want to provide some sort of content that talks about the business model as a whole, because as you know, most of my videos are very strategy based around advertising and building your store and product research and stuff like that. So this is going to be more of a video on managing the actual business, kind of like the back end stuff. So I really wanted to have one of these videos at least out there. So if somebody asked me some general questions, I can send them this. The second one is I plan on giving this to my clients, especially the beginners that we find winners for in our agency service so that they don't run into these issues when they're scaling with us, because it's honestly a little bit annoying as an agency when we're dealing with beginners, a lot of these issues do come up with payment processors, fulfilling orders, you know, money being held, the client having issues with cash flow. So this is going to be really valuable for me as well, because it's going to provide this information to my clients, which is going to allow us to scale and do our job better as an agency. And another one which I just covered is a lot of people don't understand much about how the business model actually works and how to take advantage of it and avoid a lot of issues that are easily avoidable. But honestly, most people run into them just because they're not aware of them simply because people like me don't really talk about them that much. And I do have to say I'm a little bit guilty of that. But for this video, we're going to be going pretty in depth on a lot of the different subjects that you're going to need to know if you want to have smooth scaling. So let's go over some different things that we will cover in this video so you know what to expect. I'm also going to set up chapters, which you'll be able to see them like around this area of the video so that you can skip to the area where you want to learn about or if you have a specific area where you're struggling right now. So the first thing that I want to say when you read the title of this video, I don't know exactly what you were thinking, but I would assume a lot of people are thinking like how to scale on a budget means I'm going to give you some sort of slow scaling strategy that is going to allow you to scale efficiently. And that's not really what this video is. Like I said, this video is going to be more about the back end. And the reason is because any strategy can be scaled fast or slow. I personally think scaling on a budget is more about managing the back end of your store correctly than it is the actual scaling strategy. You can use any scaling strategy that you want as long as you understand your back end situation and you correlate that to the strategy, which we'll get into towards the end of this video. But essentially, any scaling strategy can be scaled slow or fast, I think it's more about can you handle scaling fast because there's a lot of moving parts that we're going to cover in this video that you may not be aware of and it might stop you from being able to scale a little bit faster and it might hinder you to only be able to scale slowly. So this video is more about understanding your situation and making sure that you're not scaling too fast, but you're also not scaling too slow. So the number one thing we're going to talk about is managing cash flow. The next thing is going to be about payment processors. The next one is order fulfillment. The next one is correlating your strategy with your current situation. So this is probably the most important part, understanding the realm of your e-com store so that you're, you don't overdo it and you're not underdoing it. So let's get right into it and start talking about managing cash flow. Now, this is something that, especially if you have a low budget, is going to be something that's difficult to do if you're not fully equipped with, you know, all the knowledge and experience that comes with running an e-commerce store. So here I have laid out money in and money out. So essentially, E-commerce is a cash flow heavy business. You have constant money coming in and constant money coming out. So managing it all should be really, really easy on paper. But when you look at the actual situations, there's a few things that you need to know and be prepared for so that you don't make these vital mistakes that can actually ruin your cash flow and, and ultimately end up to you losing a winning product if you're not good at managing it. So you have mainly two places where money is going to come in from. You have your card payment processor. So this could be Stripe, Shopify payments, Amazon pay, you know, whatever these are. And then of course you have PayPal. Now this is going to be how people pay you, right? Like when they go and buy your products, 
One thing that I do want to know is the time frame that it takes for you to actually receive the money because once the money goes into Stripe, Stripe holds it for a day or two and then they transfer it into your bank and then maybe it takes a day or two to actually hit your bank account. This is really important to note, which it's really important to understand that you're not going to get your money right away. If the second a customer paid, if you got that money right away, a lot of the issues that could come up with managing cash flow wouldn't really happen. But it's these timelines that kind of complicate things and it kind of forces you to be more strict with how you're planning your cash flow. So usually Stripe and Shopify payments and Amazon and those other similar payment processors usually take like one to three business days to pay out. So that's not too bad. But one of the things that you have to note is a weekend is not a business day. So keep that in mind. And then PayPal usually is really good. Like you can usually once you get a sale, it'll go into your PayPal balance and then you can transfer it out pretty much instantly. Granted, you don't get any holds or anything like that. And then you have two primary ways that money is going to be going out. You have your advertising cost, assuming, you know, if you're running a Facebook ads or TikTok ads, and then you have your order fulfillment, which, you know, you're kind of in control of when that money leaves your bank account. Like you can wait a day or two to fulfill orders, but ideally you're doing it like within one day of the person placing the order. So there's a couple things worth noting that you need to know if you want to be efficient with managing your cash flow. Number one, weekends can be very, very brutal, especially considering considering like if you're in the bracket of Stripe where they take, you know, two to three business days to pay out, this essentially means that all the money that you get from Thursday to Sunday is not going to hit your bank account until Monday to Tuesday. And this is a hard lesson to learn if you're relying on the cash flow coming in from your e-commerce store to pay for your ads or to pay for your order fulfillment, then weekends can be brutal. Like you could go an entire weekend not being able to pay your advertising because you have no money coming in. Obviously, this becomes less of an issue the more money that you have in your bank account. So you should always expect to have like at least two to four days worth of expenses sitting in your bank account just so that in the case, like let's say a weekend came up or a holiday came up, you can continue paying your advertising and you can continue fulfilling your orders even though you don't have any money coming in from these processors. Another thing to keep in mind is that if your money gets held up by Stripe or PayPal or Shopify payments, then this all gets thrown out of whack. Um, and we're going to be talking about in a minute how you can kind of like avoid getting your money held, you know, do everything that you can that's in your power to avoid this. But if it does happen, it throws all of these dynamics out the window. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is that advertising costs usually get deducted like the same day. So if you're on automatic payments with TikTok or if you're automatic payments with Facebook, then if you spend $100 today, yes, you might get three, $400 in sales. Keep in mind, you're not going to see that three to $400 in sales for one to three business days, but Facebook is going to take their $100 cut like right now, like today. So this could make things complicated, especially in the beginning. If you scale really fast or really hard and you don't have a lot of money to cover the expenses, you could be saying like, on paper, I'm profiting $200 per day, but you're actually losing like $100 per day because you're not actually getting the payouts for three days. So you can see why things get a little bit complicated and confusing during this process. One other thing to keep in mind is you need to fulfill orders in a timely manner. You can't just, you know, have money come in and then pay your ads and then have money come in and pay your ads. You need some sort of buffer there so that you can continue to fulfill your orders and not only just fulfill the orders, but fulfill them in a timely manner, which we'll get into in a little bit in this video as well. All right. So the next subject is going to be in relation to payment processors, and this is going to be about having a legal business. Now, obviously, if you're in the U.S. Say, I already know what you need to do. It's essentially just an LLC. Once you start making money, it's really important that you take this step because it's really going to help your relationship with the payment processor. Obviously, if you're in a different country, this process could be entirely different. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know what I'm talking about because if you're in Europe, I have no idea what this means. You have to talk to a lawyer or an accountant or, you know, read up some articles online and figure out exactly what you need to do. But here in the USA, you pay like $500 or something, you get an LLC made, it takes one to two weeks, depending on the state that you're in. And from there, you get your business registration paperwork, you get essentially a business social security number from the government, which the payment processors do ask for. You're actually supposed to have a legal business set up before you even set up a payment processor. So which I know a lot of people don't. And that's why I'm saying once you find a winning product, you need to jump on this and you need to get it done as soon as possible. Having a legal business set up is also going to minimize your chances of getting a PayPal hold or a Stripe hold by quite a bit. And I think just for this reason alone, it's worth doing because I think it does minimize the chances probably 
probably the most out of any other thing that you can do is having a proper business set up legally so that when they come to you asking for documents, you have it ready and you can provide whatever. So we'll talk briefly about Stripe and Shopify payments, which honestly, these are the easiest payment processors to deal with until you get to like 5K a day and up. It could get a little bit tricky at that level, but keep in mind that by then, you know, you're gonna have your legal business, you're gonna be making money, so you have a lot more control and power with what you can do with your store. But for now, as a beginner, just keep in mind that if you wanna minimize your chances of getting banned or getting a money hold, you're gonna wanna have a legal business set up like 100% and one thing that they might do is they might request information or documents from you and my recommendation is like the second they request those documents you need to send them in because it could take up to a week for them to actually review the documents and show them as posted on your account. And up until they review your documents they will actually hold your money. So if you take you know a week to submit your documents, then you could be going two weeks without any cash flow from that processor. So I would get on that like very snappy, just jump on it as quickly as possible. Another thing to keep in mind, and this is obviously going to be for any payment processor, but fulfill your orders really fast and have tracking available for every single order and make sure that you actually go into the back end of Shopify and upload your tracking information to the customer database so that when Stripe goes in and checks, because they do have access to your store if you're using Shopify payments, they can see that you have tracking information for every customer and you are in fact fulfilling orders. If you don't put your tracking information on the order page of the customer, then it's pretty much guaranteed that you're gonna get your money held until you provide proof that you're fulfilling orders. Uh, let's talk about PayPal for a minute. So obviously a lot of the things with PayPal are gonna be similar to keeping a good relationship with Stripe, but obviously PayPal is a lot more strict and a little bit of a pain in the ass when it comes to you know holding money and banning accounts and stuff like that. So obviously having a legal business is going to help but we don't need to say that again we've already said that numerous times one thing that I do want to point out here is they ask for some very specific documents that are kind of a pain in the ass to get like your legal business info tracking numbers for specific orders um, they might ask you for supplier invoices they might ask you for a picture of your identification like your driver's license or your passport or something like that so if they ask for a supplier invoice or proof of inventory it's really easy to get this all that you need to do is go to your supplier provide them with a receipt or like an invoice template and just ask them to fill it out for you as a customer. Um, I did this and PayPal reviewed it and they thought it was fine and they accepted my account. So I just want to say that just for any of you newbies out there that don't know what a supplier invoice is or how to get it. You can do it through AliExpress or if you have a private supplier, most suppliers are just willing to type it out and then you can send it off to PayPal. Obviously, upload your tracking numbers into PayPal. There are some apps that do this automatically, but some apps don't. So make sure that once you start getting orders, go and fulfill them and check if PayPal has the tracking numbers in there. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to go in there and do it manually and there's also some apps that you can do that will do it automatically as well. One thing that I do wanna say is if you're a beginner and you're using PayPal, you're probably gonna get a PayPal hold. Essentially what the hold is, is they're gonna ask you for tracking numbers for random orders um, and they're gonna check the tracking and make sure that you're actually shipping orders. So one thing that I would say is if this happens to you, and this is really worth noting, wait until your tracking says delivered before submitting the tracking numbers um, to PayPal, not before putting them into PayPal, but before submitting them. So when I said earlier, uploading the tracking numbers into PayPal, I was talking about clicking on the customer and you can see their tracking number. What I'm talking about right now, when you wanna wait is when they ask for specific customer orders to verify that you're fulfilling orders. This is just one tip that I wanna leave here and you can do whatever you want with it, but I did this and everything went fine. The only thing that's really shitty is if PayPal is like, hey, can you give us the tracking number for these specific orders? And then they check the tracking and, it, and the product is still not delivered, that's really shitty. So I just like to wait until it delivers. And obviously having fast shipping time really helps with PayPal as well. All right, let's talk for a quick minute about fulfilling orders and how to manage it and kind of how to plan this ahead of time. Because if you don't fulfill orders, like people are going to catch on, they're going to comment on your ads, they're going to report your ads, they're going to leave feedback on Facebook. And also the payment processors are going to get pissed off and hold your money, hindering you from scaling further. So obviously when you're fulfilling orders, you need to keep your cash flow in mind. We talked about this earlier about how you know payment processors might take a few days to pay you out and ad spend is taking money instantly so it could be a little bit hard to juggle all this shit but you need to prioritize fulfilling orders just as much as you would with ad spend and managing your cash flow 
So if you're fulfilling through AliExpress, I'm assuming most people that are new, newly scaling are still doing this. Keep in mind that it's gonna take one to three days to process the order, and then it's gonna take another 20 to 30 days to ship the order. It is crucial that you do not be one of those guys that like waits a week to fulfill their orders because like you're just making the situation so much worse. Um, but at the same time, you don't wanna be fulfilling orders too aggressively if you don't have cash flow coming in or if you don't have reserves. The way that I would recommend doing it is spend a little bit of money on ads every single day so that your you know your ROAS is keeping up with your cash flow and then once you get an excess of money go and fulfill your orders and you should be able to scale slowly over time if you follow that kind of like pattern um, the only thing is you want to make sure that you're fulfilling orders at least like every two days like that honestly to me would be my max like I wouldn't wait more than two days to fulfill orders so keep that in mind one thing to note is it's really, really, really helpful to transition to a agent or some sort of fulfillment service so that you can get like under 15 day shipping time rather than fulfilling through AliExpress. So if you're not doing that, I would highly recommend going into the, you know, some e-com Facebook groups or talking to people like me through the DMs, trying to figure out who's a good supplier with good shipping time so that you don't have to deal with these issues. And this of course is gonna help your payment processors a lot, especially if you have fast shipping times, they're gonna be a lot less likely to try to hold your money. And if they do hold your money, they're gonna be likely to hold it for a lot less time because the faster your products get delivered, the faster they feel comfortable giving you your money pretty much. So we don't need to talk about fulfilling orders that much. Let's talk about scaling strategy and situations. So. The point of making this video was not to give you a specific strategy that you can follow to scale on a budget because honestly, 99% of scaling on a budget is being able to efficiently manage your cash flow, how you're fulfilling orders, keep your advertising paid. The point of this video was to make you aware of all of these moving parts so that you can understand, you know, what your current situation is, what your cash flow is, what are the moving parts like what how long is this person taking to pay you and what are your expenses? This way you can kind of use that information to gauge how quickly that you can scale because the strategy doesn't really matter. You can do any strategy fast or slow. I just want you to understand the difference and how to determine if you're scaling too fast or too slow. So essentially, if you're struggling to fulfill orders or pay for your ads, just slow it down. If the strategy you're following says that you need to scale to $1,000 per day in ad spend in seven days, maybe you should do it in 30 days instead of seven days. There's not much wrong with that. Obviously, it's a pain in the ass, but I promise you, if you don't have fulfilling orders and you don't have good cash flow management and you're not keeping your advertising paid, you're not gonna be able to scale anyways. So in my opinion, it's a little bit better to scale slower if you have to in order to actually be able to scale rather than just like ramping it up straight from the beginning and ruining everything. And another thing for those of you guys out there that are like super conservative and careful with your money and how you do things, if you're able to cover all of your expenses, advertising, fulfillment costs, and you're not having issues juggling all the cash flow, you should go ahead and scale a little bit harder. So if you wanna learn about my strategies and all this specific stuff, I have other videos on my channel where you can check them out, but that's it for this video. I hope that it was valuable to you and I hope that once you do find a winning product or if you have a winning product right now, you're able to take the information information here and avoid all of the mistakes that a lot of beginners make. And obviously I made these mistakes once upon a time. That's how I learned my lesson, but it doesn't mean that you have to make the mistakes and hopefully you actually listen because this stuff does actually happen. And there's a lot of precautionary things that you can do to avoid payment processor hold, keep your orders fulfilled and, and just do all these things that nobody talks about. So I hope this video was good. If it was leave a like, leave a comment with your feedback. If you're somebody who has experience and you want to give advice to other beginners who are trying to scale on a budget, feel free to leave a comment. It allows us to kind of learn and grow here as a community. And I love seeing you guys giving each other advice and talking in my comment section. But that's it for this video. I'm Noah Brewer and I'm out. Peace.